because I didn't realise at the time that that sort of high and low was going to be for the rest of my life. Unbeknownst to me, I think I've been bipolar all my life. Bipolar is such a hard thing to deal with. I just wish I could cry. What you could do? I'm actually on 17 tablets a day. No Gallagher. This is drug taking. It's fucking... People die from bipolar, so therefore, you know, it's a very serious issue. And I forgot the question. <laughs> But, uh, but it's because I've been on so many meds. Yeah. <laughs> I actually took a massive overdose in 1995 and ended up in intensive care. And I've been worse since 1995, but I didn't actually get diagnosed until about 97. My understanding as we sit here now is it takes an awful long time to get a diagnosis of bipolar. Well I think it's great every morning get a play I'm a popular big heart makes fall I've got lots of Okay Nick well we're here doing this photographic study. What's bipolar? I think the very best way of describing it is to say that our brains all the time are trying to keep our mood within normal levels. Right. We're having things happen to us and uh, just random changes going on. Uh -huh. Everyone's mood can be up one day, down a bit another day. Uh -huh. But normally our brains keep the mood within normal levels. Right. Bipolar disorder, what's happening is the person's brain can't maintain those normal levels. Right. And they can either go excessively high or deeply low, right. and that may either just come out of the blue due to random changes, or it may be an overreaction to something that's making them feel good or low. Right. But in addition to those extremes of mood, people can often experience delusions where they believe things that aren't true, or hallucinations when perhaps they, they hear things that aren't happening or see things that aren't happening. Often there are episodes that occur of either high or low and between that the person's relatively well uh -huh. but in other people it, the mood may be changing continuously so-called cycling right so it, it can be very different in different people oh bollocks 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 Prior to the diagnosis, I think I was being treated for just depression. Um, but I, I got on, they put me on a, a medication called Siroxad. And I went completely off the scale. Um, yeah, flew to Seattle to see Jimi Hendrix's grave. You know, thought I could communicate with whales because at the time I used to play guitar and chartered a boat and went to. Uh, Tofino, which is in, on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Wanted to see the killer whales in their natural environment, so that was 97, and, and obviously it, the psychiatrist then had the evidence that I went high and low. Um, I think generally speaking, people don't go to a medical professional when they're high, because that's something that you don't tend to do. It's, you only get involved in medical services in a high when it becomes into like the psychosis and the dangerous element of the illness. It's... You got a boy. Okay. Are you recording? Okay, so we're on our way to Cardiff. Is everybody in shot for the crew? Everybody's in shot. Okay. Who for the crew? So, uh, here's to our adventure. We're going down to Cardiff now, beautiful day. And let's say, let's have a fucking great gig. Huh? That's it. Rocking good gig. Stage. Good gig. Good gig. Very good. Right. 
in the general population, the risk of the most severe sort of bipolar disorder is about one in a hundred. Right. If okay. you've got a parent who's had bipolar illness, the risk increases from one in a hundred to about one in ten. Right. Okay? okay. But it doesn't mean you'll definitely get the illness. Okay. But it, it's a signal really to be more careful about the things we know that might trigger illness. What you have to remember is that nine times out of ten, the child will not develop Absolutely. bipolar. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's, that's yeah. what I put to my kids. Yeah. That you, I, instead of being the increased risk, is the fact that even though it might be an increased risk, it's still uh, 10 chances of possibly getting it, or 90 chances of not, not getting it. Exactly, yes. You know, I thought, well, the, the second coming's going to happen, and I'm going to be the second coming. So I got in touch with the chief rabbi, and, try to convince him to teach me how to read and write Hebrew so I could read the Bible in its native tongue because I figured if I was going to be the next Jesus I would need to know these sort of things and you know at that time you're so serious and and you could you know get yourselves into a lot of problems <laughs> yeah. when I've been in Mania I've never gone to the the doctor. It's always been because of the, the depressive elements, because I have a lot of problems with suicide isolation, which it becomes an ideal, it becomes the only solution. And after four attempts, you know, I, I know what it's like to be in that particular um, frame of mind, and it is not pleasant. What do you think causes bipolar? Okay, it's absolutely all to do with both the genes that we inherit that right. make our brain and behaviour go in a certain way okay. and also the various experiences and life events that we have uh -huh. that impact us and I don't think it's all to do with genes and biology and it's not uh -huh. all to do with life events and experiences but it's that combination of the things. Right. So in bipolar, mm. what are the big fundamental questions that we need to get answers? Okay, I, th I think the, the, the most fundamental questions are pinning down exactly which brain systems are important okay. and exactly which um, environmental experiences and triggers are most uh -huh. important. Because really what we want to do is to be able to make a difference to people with illness, to be able to uh, make diagnoses more rapidly and accurately, and then to get people on the very best sorts of help that we can offer. Uh -huh. It might be medications, but it also might be lifestyle advice, right. or it might be particular sorts of talking treatment. But without knowing in detail the brain mechanisms and the specific environmental triggers, we can't really give that excellent advice we want to give in the clinic. The, the key message is that actually people vary enormously and no simple answer fits everybody. Okay, people, so it's like a one size all doesn't fit? There is fit, no it? one size all. And for uh -huh. bipolar disorder, there's no one size fits all treatment. Different people respond to different treatments. And that's why it's really important that people with illness go and get uh, professional help, they get a full assessment, and then they get the advice and help and treatment that's focused on them as an individual, rather than thinking it, it would just be the same thing for everybody. The music is, I'm fairly confident about the music and, and the performance because I know we can play these songs. You know, whether we play these songs and we get enthusiastic response at the gig, it's a different matter. 
I mean, I didn't really understand it at first. I think a lot of people find that they, that they don't really understand what's going on. You know, I mean, I just sort of bumped into him as, as an old mate and, 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 you know, picked it up from there, not really realising it um, exactly, you know, uh, you know what, what had happened to him. What's happened over the course of the films, and perhaps it's a part of the rehabilitation thing that I've been going through, is I've bounced back and, and that's a, a huge benefit for me.